So here it is now. I've actually got a little bit of time to, to continue this series and hopefully I'll be adding a lot more videos over this next week. Uh, but let's uh, let's move on anyway. So the last thing that we did inside of the uh, the Pong sort of style game that we were looking at here uh, was we'd added the ball and, and uh, stopped it from sticking to the walls and had it bouncing around in, uh, so that it continued its energy in the right direction. And we also introduced the menu scene as well. So I'm just tapping on play and I'm going to play here so that everyone can see. And what we're going to do in this this uh, tutorial today is we're basically going to add in the score uh, the score system. So we're going to see the score counter tick up. We're going to have a high score uh, in the menu scene as well, which is going to be placed at the bottom here. And we're also going to make the ball go a bit faster because right now the ball just stays at the same pace and it, the difficulty never increases. So uh, just a small point as well, guys. What I did is I I changed the size of this pong paddle here. So, uh, because what it was, is it, as it's a little bit wide, it's not, there's not a lot of challenge. So all I did was tap on the, uh, the puddle inside of the, the game scene, and then tap on R, and I just used the red uh, size tool to adjust the, uh, the size of it on the x-axis. Okay? So the next thing is, let me just see my notes and you guys, so that you can follow along and, and then put this on your side as well. So, uh, ball update. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to update the, the ball script and we're going to make it go a little bit faster so that it bounces around the screen faster and faster over time. So let's do that first. So if you click on the, uh, inside the Pong scripts on ball, just double tap on that or double click on that and that will open up inside of Mono Develop or the default um, ID that you've got set up. That could be Unitron or it could be uh, Visual Studio. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert this code here. And I'm going to explain this just after I've done it. And I'm going to put this invoke repeating up here. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. Um, what it is, is I've created a function called in ball. Okay, I, I think I'd explained a little bit about functions before, as you can, is you when you make a call or you activate that function, you know, the, the the statements or the code inside of the function will get called as well. So in this case, what we're doing is we're getting the rigid body. Um, now the rigid body is the physics object which is attached to the ball, which makes it act like a real world object or makes it act like a physics object. So in this case, we want it bouncing off the wall. So that's why we included the rigid body to the ball originally in, in the, I think the, the, second, uh, the second part of the tutorial. And so what we're doing is we want to affect the velocity. So we're saying rigid body dot velocity, which is saying, you know, the, the, the velocity part of the rigid body, which is why we have this, this dot syntax here. Uh, times equals 1.05. So this, this asterisk here is basically like times, uh, multiply. You could, you could say something like this. You could go um, basically, if I, if I can remember how to type this, rigid body equals rigid body times 1.0, 1.05, okay? So you could write it like this, um, but it's just a little bit faster to write it like this. Whenever you see this times equal, it's taking itself and then it's, it's multiplying by the number that you're adding. So for example, if I've, if I've got the number two and I say times equals two, I'm doing two times two. Um, if it's 4 times equals 4, then it's 4 times 4, or 4 times equals 2, then it's 4 times 2. So just so you know, this syntax, it, you could write it like this. It's a little bit more intuitive, a bit more clear, but over time I just found it a lot easier to do it like this. Uh, it's, it's a lot faster and, and it's easy to read once you get used to it. So this line increases the velocity. And this debug.log, all of this does here is it's just going to give us some output into the console and I'll show you that in a moment and it just gives us some debug feedback about what's happening inside the script so we want to basically whenever we do a debug.log all it does is base is write a line into the console and in this case what we want it to write is this velocity which is just a set of characters like a word or a string I, I could write anything here I could velocity is um, it doesn't matter what we have to do around this string though is we have to put these inverted commas here which make it into a string. If I take this away then the problem is the whole thing becomes a string as you can see that's pink. Uh, and inside of the um, monodevelop uh, environment uh, something that is pink is a, 
uh, is a comment by default. Sorry, is, is a string, a string by default. A string is just a, a, a text, like a sentence or a word or, or even a single character. So what we want to say is, is the debug.log, the console, we want it to say velocity is, and then add the velocity of the rigid body. Okay, and that's all we're doing here. Is the same as here. We're just, we're just here. We're changing the velocity, and here we're displaying the velocity, just so we can, we know that it's being updated. Okay, and then the last thing inside of this script that we need to do is we need to actually call this function so that it does get updated over time. And in this case, what I'm going to use is this invoke repeating uh, function. Now, invoke repeating is is not a function that I wrote. Invoke repeating is part of the Unity uh, library that that anybody can use and it comes built in. So in this case what invoke repeating does is it delays and repeats something. If I just have invoke, for example, I, I take away the repeating, I could say invoke increase ball velocity and that'll just happen once. Uh, and if I say invoke and then just say inside of the uh, the parameters, just for example, I'll just demonstrate this so that it's clear what I'm explaining because invoke is very, very useful and you guys can use this in the future. And, you know, I, I use these very, very often. So invoke increase ball velocity. So we're calling this function. So we need to give the function as a string. Remember those inverted commas are make, make it into a string. And then this second part here says call that function one second later. So that's why it's very, very useful. You can say here, I want to increase the velocity after 10 seconds or 100 or whatever, whatever number you choose. You can even put 0 0.5, a float, a float value or a decimal value. Okay, the invoke repeating function basically repeats the invoke over and over and over. So, but it has an extra parameter. The first parameter here is basically two seconds. Um, these two parameters are all set to both seconds. The first one says uh, start this after two seconds. So the first call is after two seconds, and then repeat it every time for two seconds. So, and we put this in the awake function, which if you remember from, I think maybe two or three videos before, the awake function gets called whenever the script first it goes live, whenever it, whenever it is, whenever the scene is loaded and the script comes to life, the awake function is called. And then invoke repeating will just repeat this increase ball velocity function over and over um, until we tell it to stop it. But in this case, we don't need to stop it, it's fine. So, but yeah, definitely, guys, invoke repeating and invoke are very, very useful, and we're going to use it in a moment as well, and I'll show you that. So, if I just click Save, so I'm clicking on Command and S or Control and S for a PC, go back into Unity, and it should compile on the bottom right here. Okay, that's fine, and I'm going to click on Play. Now, look in the in the bottom left here. Um, what we should see is the debug uh, log, what we what we typed in to display the velocity value, okay? So if I just move it there, so it's minus 4 at the moment, down here I'm looking, minus 4.6, 4.9, 5.1, yeah, and you can see that's getting faster and faster, 5.4, and it's becoming more difficult as well because this paddle is smaller now, 6.5, 6.8, 7.2 and it's getting faster and faster and you guys can change that that number of the velocity I, I increased that by uh, 1.05 I think I wrote down but you guys can put this to anything you like uh, so you can change 1.05 to 1.1 but that'll increase it really fast you can also adjust the, the the invoke repeating so that you increase the speed faster or slower you guys can choose so for example you can call it every one second if you like uh, and then that'll update the speed a lot faster. So have a play around with this and see what works. See what works well for you and and what kind of difficulty gradient you want to include in the game. Okay. So I'm just going to go back and save that. All right. So we've got the ball speed increasing now. Now let me check the next point. Okay. So we want to create the score score object in the game. Okay, so the next thing is what we're going to do is add the score uh, like ticker. What that does is we're going to have the score tick up over time uh, because there's no goals here. There's no like 1.2 points or, you know, uh, any kind of other scoring system. Um, so a basic one to introduce is just how long you were in the game. Or in our case, we're just going to tick the score up over time. And this is pretty simple to do. And we're going to use that invoke repeating function again, which we've just done. 
Um, so it really does come in handy. So if I create other and go to 3D text, I'm just going to shrink this down by basically tapping on, if, if you've not done this already, tap on the hello world or tap on the new text in, inside of the uh, hierarchy here. Click on uh, R and then use the middle tool to scroll it down. I'm just holding my left mouse button and clicking. And I'm going to click on W and I'm just going to move this back in the world, in the game scene. And the reason is, is that we don't need to have this score in front of the ball. I think the it's better to have the game objects in front of the, some of the items, but that's really a you know, creative choice. You guys can do what you like with in terms of positioning. You can move it forward or backwards, bigger, smaller, uh, whatever you'd like to do. I'm just gonna click on the, uh, the Z axis here on the, um, uh, on the axis controller. I can't remember the name of this, I'm sorry. Um, but it's just so that I can move it in the single axis and I'm just gonna drag the middle part here and I'm gonna move it up to the top left. And I think that is fine. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here, if you click on the new text, which is which is the same object, you can select it here or select it here. And inside of the inspector, I'm going to tap on text. And then I'm going to go to, I'm just going to write in score. And that's just so we know what it looks like when it's first started. And then if I click on the new text here, I'm going to click enter. And I'm going to change this name to score 3D text. And so that's just an easy way so that we will always recognize in the hierarchy what, what the game objects are. Um, I'm pretty big on naming things, but obviously this wall, wall here, I've kind of left that as it's just walls. Not left wall, right wall, and so on. But this, this will become clear in a moment as well. So, all right, so let me just check what the next point was. So, okay, so the next thing is what we're gonna do is create a, an empty game object, and we're gonna call this general scripts. Okay, so just so you know, create empty, tap on the uh, empty uh, game object in here, and then just rename it. Now, general scripts, um, I already have one there from before, so let me just, that was whilst I was preparing the video, so let me just delete that. All right, there we go, general scripts. So um, what, the, what I do with general scripts uh, is basically I like to keep my game over or my score state inside of a single script object. Right now, what we've got is the ball calls game over. So if I go to the ball, and you notice here, once it goes past the bottom of the paddle, uh, the minus five position or, or lower, then we basically call the menu screen, which is like game over. You know, we're saying, okay, game over, now do the next scene. But for me, I like to keep it inside of the same scripts, the game over and the score, so that whenever I, uh, whenever I go to the, a different game in the future, or whenever I come back to this game to update it, it's always going to be in that same place and uh, you know you'll find that with other games we'll have a separate score script object and you know a separate a separate script for the like, paddle and the ball and so on so that everything's separated out so let me just go back in here and so what we need to do for this general scripts is we need to add a, a main game script so if I left click on prong, pong scripts click on the right mouse button go to create javascript and I'm going to call this main game. And I'm going to double click to open that. And it's an empty script apart from the update function here, which Unity gives to us by default. So let me just check where I'm 